In this presentation, we will take a look at the payroll section related to QuickBooks Online. Here we are on the free test drive software you could find by searching in your browser, uh, QuickBooks Online Test Drive, Craig's Design and Landscaping. We're now gonna be considering the payroll. As we do so, I'm gonna jump back over to the desktop version so we can analyze the flowchart for payroll in terms of the desktop homepage. So you can see the homepage a little bit different down here for the payroll section than we had in the past because now we've activated the payroll so that we can see the payroll icons within the flowchart. Now note that payroll is typically gonna be something that's an add-on type of feature. So there's a couple things we need to know about payroll. One, it's gonna be different from, it's gonna be one of those sections that is a specialty type of area. So if you're a very small company, it might be the case that you're gonna do uh, these sections yourself because you're gonna be doing the bookkeeping for all of them, possibly with the help of something like a CPA firm at the end of the year to help with tax preparation and whatnot. However, even if you, ha if you have any employees at all, uh, it can be the case where you might want to start getting help with the payroll as well because the payroll is going to be a specialty type field and that you have different options to help you with the payroll processing because it can be confusing. There's a lot of laws related to it. And when you have the income tax and withholding related to it as well, it can be a bit confusing. Now, one of those options is to do the payroll within uh, the QuickBooks system to pay for the payroll option. That's going to be typically, you could think of it like an add-on type of feature that you'd have to pay for. There's different tiers of paying for the payroll as well. Another option is to actually have payroll done by an outside party that is not QuickBooks. So you can have someone else, basically a payroll professionals, take on that component of the bookkeeping, which you would then have to take and enter into your QuickBooks system in some way, shape, or form so that you have the financial data in the reports. We're not going to get into a whole lot of detail about that right now. Just realize that the payroll is going to be a separate section. We will have a section on payroll after the whole uh, comprehensive problem is done that will focus more on just the payroll and the components of payroll. And we have a whole other course that gets into details uh, about payroll and different payroll items as well. So just note that as time passes, payroll is getting more and more complex and therefore it's becoming more and more of a specialty. And as you do your bookkeeping, or if you're a bookkeeper, or you're working in an accounting department, you want to consider how the payroll piece is going to fit into the puzzle. Are you going to do the payroll yourself? Are you going to rely on an outside person to do the payroll? Do you want to buy payroll through QuickBooks? Or it, it is possible to do payroll, basically have a third party uh, to help you with the processing of the payroll. Now, the basic flow of the payroll would be that we would say we would pay the employees here. When we pay the employees, we would actually process the payroll. And then we're going to have payroll liabilities that we're going to have to pay at some point. And then QuickBooks will help us to process that payroll. Now, again, if you do have any employees at all and you're doing payroll yourself, then you probably want to get the, the uh, added payroll, the add-on of payroll, and get the assistance of, of QuickBooks to help you with payroll because it will help you with the processing of the forms as well. You can have quarterly uh, forms that you'll have to fill out for payroll reporting and yearly forms. Those will be the 941 forms for a quarterly reporting, the 940 for yearly reporting, and you may have state forms that you're going to have to report for as well. And of course, deal with the withholdings for the employee payroll taxes. Now, the journal entry for payroll is one of the more complex type of journal entries. Many, many people, when they enter, even if they're working in payroll, don't fully really understand the, the journal entry or the effect of the payroll journal entry that's going to be affecting the financial statement. So uh, it looks something like this. If you're going to process payroll, it would be like any other expense if it wasn't for the withholdings and other laws that are related to payroll, which means that if there was no other withholdings, it would be just like paying a vendor. Basically, you would credit cash and you would debit payroll expense and that would be it. But because you have withholdings and you've got this matching of withholdings, it looks something more like this. It's still a little bit simplified because you could, you know, name the accounts in different names and add more detail. But when you process the payroll, you would typically, if you're paying the check at that point in time, you would be crediting cash or ca cash would then be going down. And I had my little arrow going the wrong way. The cash would be going down, so it'd be a decrease to cash. The other side would be an expense, so the expense would be going up. But the complication of it would be that you'd be taking money out of the employee check so that the amount for the payroll expense would be for the full what they earned. So if they earned like $1,000, then the expense would be going up for $1,000. But you may only be paying them the net check of $800 because the government requires you to pull out the payroll taxes 
for them, force them to pay their payroll taxes, which includes federal income tax, Social Security, and Medicare at minimum, possibly state taxes as well. So that difference then that you pull out would then be going to payroll taxes, a liability account. So the liability account, the bad account, the bad thing would be going up. And then you'd have to pay off the liability account at some point in the future. And then you'd also have the employer taxes that would be thought of. And I would think of this at the same time. The employer taxes would then result in the payroll tax expense going up. These are payroll taxes for Social Security and Medicare mainly that would be increasing for the employer taxes, also federal un unemployment tax. And then the other side would be the payroll taxes payable would be going up that you would then pay at the later time. You'd be paying off these payables typically at a later time after you process the payroll. So that's that's going to be the generally the journal entry that you would have when you basically process payroll. Now, it's also a little bit complex because you can think of the same kind of journal entry from a person by person perspective or from a payroll perspective as a whole. In other words, if you had five employees, you can think of this journal entry. Basically, the paycheck stub kind of reflects this journal entry to some degree and from each of the five employees or you can think of them as aggregate and, and one journal entry reflecting the transaction for five uh, employees that you're processing payroll for obviously you would have be processing five separate checks for payroll which you can think of the actual effects on the accounts as basically aggregated together as one uh, you know processing of payroll now then the withholdings that you took out of the payroll check for social security medicare and federal income tax not not our federal income tax for our business but the federal income tax for the employees that they're going to have to pay when they file their form 1040 we withheld from for them from that and the social security and medicare as well as our portion the employer portion of social security and medicare would then have to be paid to the government to the fed uh and that would be this section so that would be decreasing the payroll liability and the other side would be going to the uh, payroll uh, the the other side would be going to the payable account decrease in the payable account and the other side going to the checking account so cash going down decrease in the payable so if you if you look at this on the quickbooks online section then you're talking you would be going to add and you'd be dealing with the employee section now again in the example version we don't have you'd have to pay for the employee section to be an add-on in order to add the, the payroll function i'm gonna we we will take a little bit of it after our, our full example problem we'll get into a little bit of payroll here and so you can get a taste of what the payroll looks like but we want to keep most of our example problem in such a way that you don't have to pay for add-ons in order to follow along with it so we will then go through the full payroll problem and then give you a little taste of uh the the payroll functioning later and if you want to dig deeper into payroll we do have courses both quickbook courses and uh, just theory courses on payroll if i jump back into the desktop version because desktop version has a has like a free version that we can we can look at just to analyze the payroll how that data input might look when you process the payroll it looks something like this the data input so up top we we basically have to enter this information we'd say are they hourly employee or salary employee typically we would have the rate and then we'd have the hours that were worked and then we'd have the calculation of the net check and the calculation of the employer taxes so the net check then would be the 800 for this case which was the 20 times 40 so 800 for this time period that's how much they would earn gross and then we would take from their paycheck whatever is there for the fe for the federal withholding and the federal withholding uh is the fit their taxes that they're gonna have to report on their form 1040 form we're taking money out that's going to be the payments that would show up on the w-2 form and and that's a difficult calculation to make it's not a flat tax it's a progressive tax system so it depends on the w-4 information that the employee fills out and so on and so forth and then we have the social security and medicare that we're also going to be taking out these are the uh, payroll taxes for fica uh, taxes social security and medicare now those are more flat of rates so those are should be more straightforward to to actually calculate and if you subtract the 800 minus the 110 then 49 and the 11 you get to the 630. this is the net check that would be received so in this case for the employee journal entry uh, like what accounts are going to be affected what's going to happen here the expense account's going to go up debit the expense account or increase the expense account by 800 and then the actual checking account if you were to write a check at this point in time uh, then the checking account would be going down by the 630 the net amount and then the um 
the difference would be these three amounts that would increase a liability that we have to pay to the government later for the, the for the federal social security and medicare and then we'd have on the we'd also have over here we have to match on the employer side social security and medicare so you see these are the same or they should be the same number the medicare and social security uh these two numbers here they are yeah and so they we match them over here and these are going to have to be paid not out of the employee check but matched by the employer uh for the check now this is for one person this is for one employee and you could see how we kind of broke that out into the journal entry that we talked about that's those are the accounts that would be affected obviously we could do that same thing for every every employee that we process so if we had 10 employees we can break that out check by check you know uh, what the journal entry would be uh, or we we can aggregate that all together and say okay what's the bottom line journal entry if we were to think about the accounts that would be affected for those 10 employees on those accounts so uh, as you process the, this information in quickbooks it'll give you the detail per person which gets kind of overwhelming if you even if you don't have that many employees because you're talking about a lot of accounts and then a lot of uh, employees that are going to be broken out uh, within them so so payroll does get kind of complex uh, fairly quickly uh, if you if you pay for the advanced quickbooks service they give you pretty you know pretty good substantial support on it as well Again, we'll get into it uh, in a bit more detail after we get through our practice problem where we won't be using the paid payroll because, again, we want to practice going through it without having any of the, of the add-on type of features. And payroll is a fairly substantial add-on. A lot of people need that add-on, but it's a, it's a fairly substantial add-on. It's got a lot of different options related to it.